Hey there guys, thanks for joining us on another board game night and tonight we are playing If Wishes Were Fishes from Rio Grande Games Now this is an, actually an older game but uh, it's one that me, my family and I really enjoy so we thought we'd show you guys how it feels and how it runs So with me I have my blood brother John Yeah <laughs> Carla Hi. And my son Alex yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And of course me there's and cheer and one. cheering us on is Nathan. Uh, right, so this game is a bit of a. What we're trying to do is we're fishermen and we're trying to gain as much money as we can by selling fishes to the market stalls. So we all start off on zero money, and then these are the fishes. So on your turn, you can do one of three things. You can either take a fish from the ocean, which, if you think conceptually, this is the boat where we are. This is shallow water, and as it goes in, it gets deeper and deeper. So we can take the first fish if we want to for free, which we ignore the little speech bubble bit and we just take the fish and later on we can sell that. That's a swordfish in case you were guessing. Um, but if for example I wanted the angelfish, I would have to place these really cool little wiggly worms. And they are basically almost like little currency to go fishing with. So if I wanted the angelfish, I place the worm there and then I place it into my boat and at a later stage I can then sell angelfish at this market for two bucks, but the market traders affect how much I can get. So the black market traders, they are worth one extra buck. The gray ones are two, and the white one is worth three. So, for example, if, like I said, the option I could either take a fish from the sea, so I go fishing for a fish, or I can sell a fish. So in this case, I want to sell this angelfish. I take one of my cool little fish meeples, I place it into the market, and that means I would get two plus the two from the market trader, so it's four, which would move me up four on the track. And it's as simple as that. There's one other little thing we can do. Instead of taking a fish for the fish itself, we could take a fish um, for its wish. That's why it's called if fishes were wishes. So, for example, this king here, this kingfish, says if I throw him back into the ocean, he will allow me to sell all my fishes of the same kind. And that's pretty good because normally you can only sell one fish. So if you had, say, three angelfish, he would allow you to sell all three of them in one go. So that's pretty good. That's how you get more boats. This angelfish says somehow she'll become a boat for you. You can flip it over. So there you go. So on your turn, you can either take a fish, get a fish from the ocean, um, use its wish, or sell a fish. The game will end when, this is the market stall supplement, sort of, if the market stall reaches four fish, so for example, if we have four fish in the in the monkfish stall, then the market will close because no one wants any more monkfish. Person with a majority gets seven dollars, and second place will get three. And then from then onwards, anytime we sell more monkfish at the monkfish stall, they will go to the trash heap. If the trash heap fills up, that also signifies the end of the game, and people with a majority in year will lose victory points or lose money because they've been loitered. What do you call it? Not loitering? Uh, yeah, throwing fish on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> littering. littering, that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> littering. Um, there's four market stalls. So, first one is four, five, six, and seven. Once the four market stalls are full, that'll also signify the end of the game. So, what we'll do is we'll, we'll play a few for, around, for a few rounds. Crikey, English has just left me. <laughs> And uh, then we'll come back to you with a gameplay turn, and uh, then we'll show you what we'll tell you what we think about it at the end of the, the game. You have anything to add, Alex? Last time we played this, you absolutely smashed us. Are you going to do well this game? I'm going to beat them up. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay. So we're going to give you a little bit of a view of the gameplay turn. We've had a few turns. One of the markets have closed. The clownfish market has closed. And both Carla and Alex were tied there, as they are right at the end of the or top of the scoring charts, 20, 20, 20 and 19 points. And then John's in third place, me lagging behind a bit. It is now Carla's go, and you can see she's got a whole fleet of boats. <laughs> and we have some fish oh. out available with some worms on, and our first double headed fish card. So, call us go. I am going to go for the double. So one, two, three. I can reach over. 
Okay, then this refills into the deep sea. Um, wow, man, those fish are really tempting. So, as it happens, I've already got a starfish in my boat. Starfish at the moment are worth four points, two for its base value plus two for the grey trader. But there's a lot of fish out here with worms on, and I like worms. They're really squishy and weird. Um, so I could sell my starfish for four points which get me out the track a bit, but I think what I'm going to do is I might be use a wish. So I'm going to use this for its wish. So I take the worms, put it into my pile. Then this one says I can trash someone's fish and then sell one fish of my choice. So I'm going to trash... I think I'm going to trash Carla's fish. Yeah. So to the trash it goes with her. So we've got a few fish in the trash now. Two of Alex's and one of Carla's. Uh, and then as the fish I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell my starfish. Which means I put one into the starfish pile and I gain four points. One, two, three, four. There we go. I'm in, in the money. Well, Alex, what are you going to do? Alex's got no fish at the moment. He's got one worm. As he's been spending it frivolously. Well, I'm just going to take this guy. And his wish is kind of useless, so I'm just... Are you taking him for the fish? Yeah. Okay, so the monkfish. Monkfish are just base value too. Wait, where's my worm? In your hand. In your hand. Oh. Um, but of course he can move, maneuver the traders around later to get some other points. What are you doing, John? Um, I think I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to take me a monkfish, get some wiggly worms. I don't know if I mentioned this in the intro section, but the person with the most worms at the end of the game will get 8 cash, and second place will get 4. And there's also nice scoring ones like this, which just came out. Which we need to make sure Jason doesn't get. Yeah. So it goes back to Carla again. What are you going to do? Mm. Just looking around what Carla's plan is. She's got two starfish. If she sells that, it counts as two, so she'll put two fish down there. And what we're looking for, for to close the next market is five fish in a market. And then leader in second place will get those respective points. Well, there's two clownfish. When you, um, the clownfish are not dead because uh, you can still sell clownfish at this market. The only problem is the trader can't then sell it on. So they, go, they get spoiled and go to the trash heap. And obviously once the trash heap fills up, the game will end and people will lose points. I think I am... Um I can, yeah. I think I'm just going to sell my two starfish for double the points. So, so they are four each. So, so that's eight. eight. So I need to put two fish in the market. Jumps up into the lead. Right, so I've got, it's back to me, I've got no fish. And I don't really want any of fish. This one's wish is allowed to move the grey marker on and then you can sell the fish. This one means you can sell all the fish of one kind. None of them are really that useful. This one's not that useful. Oh, I'm not happy with any of these choices. Um, you know what? Um, damn to hell, I'm just going to take a clownfish. Play it safe. That fills up. Oh, nice. Alex, what are you going to do? Uh, really? Yeah. Okay, so he's going to sell his monkfish. So put a monkfish down there. Which that goes back in there. Um, as there's no extra traders on yet, it's only worth the two. So Alex goes up another two points. One, two. I guess to you, John. John's got a monkfish as well. A whole monkfish. Wow. Not a lot on the board. Mm. A couple of markets heading towards the closure space. We've actually taken a, played a few of those cards that trash the fish. So that's why there's three there, two there. So, um, John's spending some worms. All the worms to get this swordfish one for its wish. You can use Whoa. its wish. Yeah, why not? Okay, so you a whole four. Is that correct? Yeah. So basically, worms you you score points equal to the number of worms you have, a which whole is four. four, and then you have to give every other player that. Oh, I forgot Ooh. about that bit. <laughs> <laughs> you still want to do that? No. <laughs> swordfish, it is. All right. 
Okay, um, and then it goes back around to Carlo again. So you can see it's pretty easily smooth round flowing game. Oh, you want to do your turn quick? What did you do? You just take oh, an angelfish. And I took an angelfish, yeah. Okay, I'm going to do my turn because my turn might be some worth some points. So, I am going to spend one worm to go there. And then I'm going to take this monkfish. No, and I'm going to use it for... <laughs> I'm going to use it for its wish. So, I've got... Two... Four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten worms. Shake. Boom. Ten points. So 15 to 25. They still don't get me into the lead. And then I have to dish out some worms. So there you go, Carla. There's a worm for you. John, there's oh, a worm for thanks, you. Man. Alex, there's a worm for you. I love worms. And then these go down. Double monkfish comes out. And then it's your turn, Alex. Um... Just take that clownfish, man. It's got three worms on it. Yeah, take it. Wiggly worms. <laughs> it's just but you can't use it for its wish. Yeah. And then John, what yeah, are you doing? Double monk. Yeah. I think that's where I'm heading. Oh man, I just gave you the worms oh, no, for that as well. Thank you. <laughs> you can't sell the fish the turn you get them, just in case anyone was wondering. But obviously, they'll still be available next turn to sell. And there you go. I think that's basically three rotations in seven minutes. <laughs> so it's, it's really fast flowing game. Uh, we'll be back when we finish off the game. Carla's already taking her turn, stealing another angelfish. And uh, we'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we have completed our game of if wishes were fishes, as opposed to what I might have said in the beginning. Um, and the scores have been telling it was a really close game. I, I find most of the games we play of this is really close. Uh, but in last place, for his first play is not too bad, was John. Well done, John. Thanks. 59 points. It was okay. Yeah, well, don't feel too bad because I'm not too far off you. Oh, no. As you can see, I'm in third place on 61 points. And that means Alex came second on 64. Well done, Alex. Yeah, I told you you are crushed, man. And Carla oh. won with a big angelfish delight right at the <laughs> end. <laughs> All the angelfish. Look at this. On the last turn, she sold about four angelfish. Moved the the extra trader into there to score big. And then, of course, she got the bonus from that as well. And John got a sneaky five yeah. points just for having the one fish in there. And he also had the second most um, worms. So he got him another sneaky four points, pushing up right onto my tail. But I had the most fish, so I scored... So I had the most worms, so I scored eight points. So there you go. That's the end of our game. Uh, we came close to actually. I'm not. I don't think I've seen a game end with the trash ending, but uh, we only had three spaces left in the trash as we were playing a lot of the cards that ditch the the tr the fish from tr areas. And I've with someone. I think someone sold a couple of fish here in there as well. So that was a really interesting game. Let's see. What did you guys think? How about you, John? This was your first game. Yeah, first game. I mean, when you when you pull this out. I mean, you look at the box and you think, all right, okay, this is going to be a fun little kid's game. <laughs> but boy, was I wrong. I mean, it is a simple game, don't get me wrong, but it's surprising at how much the tactics go in, uh, looking at the card and you're looking at everyone else's boats and they've got <laughs> this pile of angel fish that nobody stopped. <laughs> um, but there is an opportunity, so sometimes you're, you know, you're working through. And there's a lot more thought that goes into it than what you'd assume looking at the box and the wiggly worms <laughs> uh, so yeah it was fun I enjoyed that, that was fun. what would you give it out of 10? Oh, 10 being good 10 being good <laughs> or brilliant yeah or... but you see I don't know if it compares on your gaming scale but I enjoyed that and I'm going to say 7 yeah well you've got to keep it in mind I mean, it's a, it's a slight family based game so on that sort of light family scale it's a pretty good game. I mean, the components are really, really good. I love these little works. Yeah, they they you can't awesome. help but just sit and fidget with them the whole time. Um, and then, of course, you've got the cool little fish meeples and the trader meeples. And the cards are good quality, nice artwork, interesting choices of the fish. You know, the clownfish, smugfish, swordfish. So that's really cool. I really like this game. Uh, me and my family play it a lot. Um, so I think for me, I'll give it a 7.5 on that light family scale. Um, it's a really solid, nice, fun game, and if you have kids and lightweight gamers, yeah! <laughs> it's always worth pulling out. How about you, Carla? You won this game? Yeah. I think the 
the game is is quite solid in terms of tactics. Uh, like John said, it 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 plays or it looks like a, a very family friendly game, but and it is. It is. Um, so you can easily play this. My four year old will sit here and play because the basic concept is I have this fish, I can sell it to the same picture. Yeah. So it's you know. It's set collection almost in a way for him, so that's really nice and easy for him. Well, he struggled too with the concept of wanting to sell his fish. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I just want to collect them, not sell them. I don't want to get rid of my fish. <laughs> uh, but once he got past that, he understood the basics to it, and just on that that level, um, you can you can dumb it down for kids. But like John said, for adults, there's a whole tactical, you know thing going there about trying to outwit the other one from getting certain cards at certain points which you know makes it a lot of fun and so, it plays really fast especially when you know what you're doing yeah i mean you guys must have seen on the mm -hmm. gameplay turn we did three rotations in no time so how much would you give it out of 10 on that I'd sort of like family scale on the, on the family scale i think i would also give it yeah i, I think a seven i think there are still still certain games like Zilloretta that i would prefer mm. in the family but I think this is a nice, quick game. Yeah. So. All right. Let's go to the youngest Froud family member. <laughs> well, how much would you give it, Alex? Or ex first, it... first tell us what you think of it. Okay. So it's kind of a short game like Splendor over there. It's quite easy and you can get the basics and it's quite fast. But other on Formula D over there, it's quite slow and long and you need lots of tactics. This it causes some tactics, but not too much. I'll give it around an eight. An eight? So you, but you enjoy playing this, don't you? Yeah. And I, I, I like playing this with you because I can see what you're always trying to do, trying to manipulate <laughs> the worms so you can get as much victory points, which is really cool. Good, so, look. Yeah. Second place. Yeah. Oh, well, we played this, um, when did we play this, Alex? I think we played this a couple of days ago, didn't you? Me, you, yeah. Mom and Nate. Uh, I think on Sunday. That's right, for Mother's Day. Yeah. Who won that? Didn't you win that? Yeah, I won. Yeah, and you got something close to like 70, 80 points, I didn't got, you? No, I got around 90 points. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a really big score. That's a big score. Well, there you go. I think that's pretty solid results from us. If you're looking for a lightweight filler game, if wishes were fishes, that you can find it pretty much on the Facebook sites and on, on you know eBay and maybe even some stores as well because it's not uh, it's really sort of the game. I was showing the side there. Lightweight filler game. <laughs> Man, I don't have, to have a kip now because that was that was some hardcore gaming we just did. <laughs> Man, I'm well. You're sweating, John. I am sweating. <laughs> That's only because you're sitting under the light. <laughs> yeah, maybe. All right, we're gonna go play another game. So see you guys later. Thanks for watching.